Idris Elba plays one of the main characters in the Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty expansion, Solomon Reed. He's a highly experienced FIA agent, and even though he's been burned in the past, he still has an extreme loyalty and incredible sense of duty toward the NUSA. His specialty is covert intelligence missions, uncovering spies, enemy net runners, information extraction, and just breaking into very secure locations. Whether you decide to make him your friend or your foe, we can still take advantage of his current build. First up, let's talk about what weapons he uses. According to the official wiki, he uses three weapons. First being the Militech Lexington automatic pistol, the Tsunami Ashura smart sniper rifle, and his iconic tech pistol, the Pariah. There's only one way to get the Pariah Pistol, and it requires major spoilers for the Phantom Liberty campaign, so this is your warning now. During the end of the Phantom Liberty story, you will start the Firestarter mission where you will have to make a choice whether you betray Reed or you betray Songbird. If you want his pistol, you're going to have to side with Songbird and work your way out of the Coliseum. After that, you'll have the final mission with Songbird essentially getting her into orbital air and onto a spaceship so she can go to the moon. I don't want to spoil too much of what happens in between there because it's really cool, but pretty much right at the end, Reed comes out to stop you and you have to make certain choices in the dialogue to essentially take him out of the equation. And once you do that, you're able to take his pistol. Pariah is technically the iconic version of Tycom, but it has a very cool difference. So first up, charge shots fire three rounds at once. Each deals full damage. So technically it is a three round burst tech pistol by itself if you don't charge it up. But with Reed's modifications, it actually turns the weapon into a silent weapon. Headshots reduce charge time and increase reload speed. So the main thing is that this tech pistol is actually the only tech pistol in the game that is a silent weapon. So you don't need a silencer on it. It actually doesn't have any modifications you can put on it. It's just automatically like this. So it can be good for very stealthy gameplay. Like I mentioned, the other weapon he carries is the Lexington. Again, this is a full auto pistol. It can be crafted and a lot of enemies have it on them. So it is easy to find, but you can pick up the iconic version, which is the Lexington X Mod 2. You get it from Wilson from Mega Building 10. It's very easy. The side quest is you literally just go uh, like pick it up from him. You do like a gun range contest, essentially. It's, it's very easy. You'll know <laughs> what side mission it is, but it's a special version of the weapon capable of additional modification. Optimized design also allows for improved handling, so it does come with its own scope, so keep that in mind, but you can put any barrel you want on and two mods. The last weapon, like I said, is the Ashra. Again, it's a smart sniper rifle. If you aim in, it'll automatically lock on to either the head or the weak spot, which I'll talk about later under the relic skill tree if you have Phantom Liberty, but this is a good rifle to keep at a distance if you're going to be taking on a bunch of enemies because the main problem with this sniper rifle compared to other ones is that you can only have one round in the magazine at a time. There's no way to really like extend it like any of the mods that you put on is like none of them can extend the magazine size so you can only keep one. You could put on equalizer for more damage against like elite enemies. That's probably one of the better ones, but there are a couple of smart weapon specific mods here as well. Next, let's talk about attribute distribution and what perks to use under the skill trees. So as you can tell, I'm level 60, so I am pretty much maxed out here. Note, you can adjust some of these things around, which I will talk about. First up, talking about body, I would at least have it at 15 on this character. I have it maxed out to 20, which you can do 20 if you would like, but 15 is I guess like the minimum threshold only because of adrenaline rush up here. So obviously you want painkiller, combat kid, dwarf head, speed junkie, and army of one. These are all just very basic health regen perks that I recommend for everybody. If you wanted to keep it at four, that's totally fine. But with adrenaline rush, basically any health cyber that you have gives bonus health to you and there's other benefits to it such as gaining immunity to knock down and blinding with unstoppable force, increased movement speed and damage with juggernaut and calm mind so there's a delay from the adrenaline actually decaying off which is nice and then pain to gain so when you have adrenaline rush plus 20% health item recharge after neutralizing an enemy so if you are in a sticky situation where you need to have a lot of health and you're killing enemies you can actually get that health item back faster but like I said Minimum 15 just to take advantage of some of these benefits here. Under reflexes, I would say at least 15. A lot of people really like taking advantage of the air dash. You can dash in midair. It's really good for, I would say, parkour, getting in good positioning, sinking up behind targets as well. Aerial acrobat is actually very good, so it improves your midair maneuverability. You can mess with the rest of these perks down here. Again, you're going to need slippery. You're going to need dash maxed out, but you can mess with a lot of these other perks if you'd like. I would recommend multitasker and muscle memory so you can reload your weapons basically and shoot your weapons no matter what you're doing. So again, you can play around with some of these if you want to take a couple of perks points off. Like I took off mad dash 
and power slide to use somewhere else. If you want to mess around with it, go for it. Under technical ability, I would recommend level 20. You could do 15 if you would like, but the reason for level 20 is to take advantage of these perks up here, which as you can tell, I am taking advantage of this one, but let's just go over what all this stuff is very quickly. So this middle section is all about you know, bonuses to your cyberware. So all things cyber, you know, plus 10% to all cyberware stat modifiers, minus 20% cyberware cost. So you can put on more cyberware, which is very nice. Chrome Constitution, Renaissance Punk, Lucky Day. You definitely want this for the crafting components portion and then driver update. Also, just note, whenever you go to upgrade your cyberware, just take off a perk and then put on chipware connoisseur. So you can actually cater your build when you go to upgrade your cyberware to make it, you know, a little more fitting into what you want. Because some of them, have like, oh, extra RAM damage. But if you're not a net runner, it doesn't make sense to have that stat under your cyberware. So again, you put this on and when you're done, you can take it off, put it back on lucky day or whatever perk. Definitely want to max out license to Chrome, you know, again, bonus cyberware stat modifiers, bonus armor, and the cyberware slot to your skeleton. You get an extra one there. Same thing with the ambidextrous, unlocks the other cyberware hand slot. Definitely want cyborg built different. Now, the reason we're using this is to take advantage of the cellular adapter cyberware, which we'll talk about later. And there's a reason we're doing that. Then we want to take advantage of extended warranty and that edge runner. This is the level 20 perk. So allows you to exceed your cyborg capacity by up to 50 points at the cost of minus 0.5% max health per point. When you neutralize an enemy during combat, there's a 0.1% chance for each point you're over capacity that you will gain the fury state, which is essentially cyber psychosis. But you do get bonus damage, a bonus crit chance and bonus crit damage from this. The left skill tree is all about bonuses to health items and grenades. So I put on Glutton of War, Health Freak, and then maxed out Pyromania. And even though we're not really going to be taking advantage of the Pyromania perks, the main thing that I wanted, and it's not absolutely necessary for this build if you didn't want it. Again, you could take off these perk points if you'd like. But Flash Sale is interesting. So for Flash, Smoke, and Recon Grenades, you gain double grenade charges and double recharge rate. So that will give us a lot of grenades. And according to the wiki, he uses two type of grenades. Reed does. He uses the Smoke Grenade and the flashbang grenade. Those are the two types of uses. I personally like the smoke grenade over the flashbang. I can still blind targets, sneak up on targets again, still be really stealthy and have those targets not really know that I'm there. Flashbang, you know, it's a little more explosive. People kind of know what's going on. It does blind the targets, which is nice, but I personally like the smoke grenade more. You can use whichever one you like. And like I said, you can mess around with some of these perks. If you did want to take, you know, these perks off and put them somewhere else, don't got a problem with that at all. The right skill tree is a focus on tech weapons. So, with Bolt, the middle one, you get increased charge speed, more damage, and unlocks Bolt. And so, to fire a Bolt, you release the trigger for a charge shot right before it's fully charged, and it counts as a fully charged shot. It gives plus 30% damage, but you will lose out on, you know, penetrating cover, because that's what tech weapons do. They can literally shoot through three feet of concrete, which is just absolutely insane. So, there is a penalty for that, but again, the main thing is to be able to have some of that bonus damage. Again, you want lightning in a storm, so you get increased charge speed that can stack, uh, you know, internal clock, increased time window to fire a bolt, shock value, bolt, shots, ignore enemy armor, and then in charge, tech weapons no longer fire automatically when reaching full charge, so you can actually hold the charge and let it off when you would like. And the legend perk is interesting as well. I have it off, but you can put it on if you'd like. So bolt now deals electrical damage and releases an electric arc that can electrocute up to three nearby enemies. So basically, you can cause pretty interesting shock damage and <laughs> it's really good for crowd control under cool i would recommend maxing it out to level 20 mainly for the pistol perks over here so this whole left tree is for pistols revolvers uh precision rifles and sniper rifles so we are going to be able to take advantage of it with all of our weapons that we have which are both technically pistols and a sniper rifle so you definitely want to max out focus so when you aim down sight for a short duration you don't actually use stamina when you shoot a weapon which is nice definitely would recommend no sweat with rinse and reload and then head to head if you did want to put on deep breath that's totally fine. I don't find it extremely necessary. Um, I don't recommend pull because when you throw a grenade and you aim down sight, it'll automatically like, track the grenade, which we don't really want to take advantage of with this build. Highly recommend dead eye. So you get increased headshot and weak spot damage, you know, less stamina use when shooting and unlocks dead eye mode. So when you're above 85% stamina, you get 20% headshot damage and 20% weak spot damage and there's no bullet spread. Extremely nice. Definitely recommend California Reaper with high noon, long shot, Quick draw, and then the level 20 perk, Nerves of Tungsten Steel. So when Deadeye is active, this is only for revolvers, precision rifles, and sniper rifles. So this is mainly going to be for our sniper rifle, but it's a guaranteed crit hit for headshots and weak spots and increased damage as distance increases. So with our smart sniper, we can actually get some very far distance on targets 
and be able to take out a couple of them that are running at us before we, you know, decide to engage if you don't want to take, like, the stealthy style approach. So having that smart sniper with basically all these bonuses of increased reload speed, reduced stamina cost, all that great stuff, we're going to be able to do a lot of damage with it from far away. Now, you can put on run and gun as well. This is the other legend perk, specifically for pistols, which we are using two pistols, but it's specific to hip fire. So hip firing does not consume stamina, and then you have another one, which is when focus is active, you have plus 25% movement speed. If you did want to use this one, you totally can. I just don't have it on in particular. Like I said, you can put it on if you like. Not a problem. This middle skill tree is all about, you know, being stealthy, essentially. We definitely want feline footwork for the increase in movement speed and mitigation chance. Unexposed with small target and then blind spot. Basically, the higher mitigation chance, the longer it takes for enemies to detect you. You definitely want ninjutsu for crouch sprinting, so you can actually take advantage of that. Basically, allows you to move fast while you're crouching. Plus, with Serpentine, you gain more mitigation chance while crowd sprinting. You don't need Creeping Death or Vanishing Act because we're not taking advantage of Optical Camo. You can put on Shinobi Sprint if you would like. So if you're going to be in combat, again, you do use less stamina when you're crowd sprinting. And for these bottom ones in the right, now this is specifically for, you know, stealth gameplay in particular. So Killer Instinct, increased damage to knives, axes, and silenced guns outside of combat. They also provide preview of estimated damage. This includes the pariah tech pistol since it is technically a silent weapon definitely want gag order landing an attack on an enemy right after they detect you will delay detection from other nearby enemies and then quick getaway plus 10 percent movement speed after neutralizing an enemy while undetected and that can last 30 seconds and stack for intelligence we left it at three because reed is definitely not a net runner if you have phantom liberty you have access to the rel skill tree so here's some perks i recommend starting out with first up being vulnerability analytics basically allows for that weak spot it's 100 percent crit chance plus 25 percent armor penetration and when you deal enough damage to the vulnerability it'll explode causing an emp blast that'll damage enemies around it and you can get its bonus which is machine learning so when you destroy a vulnerability it's a plus 10 percent frequency of new vulnerabilities appearing plus five percent crit damage against those vulnerabilities it can stack up to five times and rent when you reach those max stacks it actually doubles all the effects now the other thing you can look into is jailbreak now jailbreak gives bonuses to every arm cyber mantis blades gorilla arms projectile launch system and the monowire and according to the wiki reed actually uses gorilla arms so when we cover cyberware you'll definitely see that we are going to be using the physical gorilla arms here so that will be a main piece of cyberware but you can put this on with gorilla arms basically allows you to charge them and when they're fully charged you can do a strong attack that does massive damage and creates a shock wave now if you want to get its bonus which is limiter removal the shock wave from charge gorilla arms <laughs> now knocks down all enemies within the range so if you want to get you know very punchy very physical you can totally do so the other one i would look into is not emergency cloaking because this deals with optical camo but sensory protocol so when crouched becoming detected by an enemy will temporarily slow time down dodge or dash out of the enemy's line of sight to immediately exit combat so this is essentially the synaptic accelerator without having to use that specific piece of cyberware it's good for stealth missions next let's go over reed cyber so according to the wiki first up he uses the gorilla arms again these are just the regular ones they do physical damage i have them a tier 5 plus definitely put those on next is heavy subdermal armor which again is just subdermal armor have a tier 5 plus plus pretty sure that qualifies as heavy but it's low cyber cost with a good chunk of armor that you can get and for the legs he technically uses the charge jump which is fortified ankle so it does cost less than reinforced tendons but i personally like reinforced tendons more because of the double jump with the charge jump it feels weird when you're just trying to do a basic jump i don't know it's just it's not my favorite piece of cyberware so if you did want to opt to use the reinforced tendons i would highly recommend it and since reed doesn't use the cyber deck sandevison or berserk i'm opting to use the chrome compressor under the operating system now it costs zero on the cyber but gives you plus 42 cyber capacity so that will allow us to use other iconic pieces of cyberware in other sections. Under the frontal cortex, I am using self-ice to negate enemy quick hacks on me, which is very good. Next, mechatronic core, more damage to drones, robots, mechs, and turrets. And then lastly, I just put on the newt module. It's technically cooldown for cyberware when you defeat targets, but it really doesn't have a place here since all of our other stuff really doesn't have a cyber cooldown. I just have it filled in as a slot here so we could take advantage of one of the perks under the tech skill tree. If you wanted to put on Crescent Cop Boost because it costs less, that's totally fine. But the main two is Self Ice and Mechatronic Core. Under the skeleton, I am using Bionic Joints. Basically, it's armor at low cyber cost, which is very good. 
Epimorphic Skeleton, which gives us a bump to our health. In this case, at tier 5 plus plus, it's plus 15% max health. Then lastly, I'm using the iconic version of the Parabellum, which is the Ra Ra Avis, plus 39% armor. And with every body attribute, you get plus 2 health per attribute point. And since we have 20 on this character, I get plus 40, which is very nice. Under the nervous system, first up, I'm going with Neofiber. Basically, increase to my mitigation chance and strength here. I do like the iconic version of the Visual Cortex Support, which is the Deep Failed Visual Interface. Crit chance increases the farther you are from the enemy. So if I'm specifically using the sniper rifle and I'm really far away, my max bonus crit chance is going to be plus 92% at 95 meters. So if I'm deciding to use the sniper, or even if I'm using Pariah Pistol, depending on how far away that target is, I do get more crit chance. Plus, with the cool attribute here, I get plus 1% crit damage per attribute point, which means I get plus 20% crit damage just from having this iconic piece of cyborg on. So, if I'm in a stealthy situation and there's a target that's kind of far away with Pariah, I can charge it up, hit that headshot, have all three rounds hit. It's going to do a lot of damage. Then lastly, I personally like the Tyrosine Injector. Since we are going to be taking a, you know, mildly stealthy approach successful takedowns grant plus 20 percent headshot damage and 10 percent movement speed so if i take down a target and then use the pistol or any other weapon that's going to have increased damage for a couple of seconds now we already talked about the subdermal armor under the integumentary system but i do like chitin basically it has very high cyborg costs but very high armor and provides additional health regen i get plus 10 percent health regen per attribute point and since we're at 20 on the body i get 200 percent more health regen with this piece of cyborg so if we're in a gunfight there's a lot of enemies if i want to summon you know max tack for some reason just for some testing this piece of cyborg can help us out a lot you could look into using pain editor as well which will just reduce all incoming damage but the other one i'm using is cellular adapter now like i said the only time you can use cellular adapter is if you have the built different perk here under the tech skill tree but it does come with some pretty interesting bonuses so under your technical ability for each attribute point we get plus 20% explosion resistance, plus 10% tech weapon damage, you know, for Pariah, so it can do even more damage, plus 10% health item recharge speed, and plus 10% grenade recharge speed. So just with this one piece of cyborg, we get a variety of bonuses. On our face under optics, I personally like the Oracle optics because it highlights enemies through walls, highlights any cameras and turrets, and highlights explosives. Reed is a guy who wants to know what's going down in the room, and I find that this is the best piece of cyberware for that. Under the hand cyborg, I personally like shock absorber for the reduction of the recoil, but if you have enough cyborg points, definitely put on a movable force. Basically, even more recoil reduction, less bolt spread, and automatically activates effects for ranged weapons that otherwise only occur when behind cover. Then obviously the smart link for the smart sniper that we are going to be using. But if you upgrade enough, again, this is maxed out tier 5 plus plus, plus 20% target lock duration, and plus 15% crit damage for smart weapons. So definitely want this one. Under the circulatory system, I personally like using Biomonitor, so I will automatically heal myself with my equipped health item when my health drops below 35%. It's a plus 15 to the health item effectiveness as well, which is really good. Basically, if I'm really weak, I can skip all the animation and boom, I'm automatically healed. I do like the iconic version of the feedback circuit, which is the Electromag Recycler. I get basically a percentage of health and stamina when I hit an enemy with a fully charged tech weapon shot, aka the pariah and i get plus 20 percent health item effectiveness because my tentacle is at 20 so having basically maining that tech weapon i'm getting certain bonuses that i would only be getting if i used other pieces of cyber this basically finishes it out which is very good here and then clutch padding i get a reduction of stamina cost for shooting my weapons which i like a lot of people i will note do like blood pump as the health item because it is very strong and it skips the animation or you could do heal on kill, which does give you health back when you neutralize an enemy. I just like the Electromag Recycler since we are going to be kind of maining the Pariah as a tech weapon. This one just gives bonuses to health and stamina. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my maxed out Solomon Reed build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, I say every video, there's a million ways to build craft in this game. I base it off of what I can find on the wiki, and I take that and basically approve upon it as much as I can. If you want to switch something out for this build that you find effective, whether it's, you know, in the attributes, in the perks, in the cyborg, even under the weapons, if you'd like, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm playing around and testing stuff in this game all the time. In any event, if what you saw is valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn on the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on any other cyberpunk build videos here 
on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream here on YouTube and then also on Twitch. Again, that link will be in the description. If I'm going to be playing one game, I'll mainly be here on YouTube, but if I'm doing variety, I will be over on Twitch, so just keep those things in mind. Again, I mainly play Cyberpunk and Destiny 2, so in Destiny 2, if I'm going to be doing, you know, PvE helps, PvP, dungeon carries, raid carries, anything like that, you want to hop in, definitely hop in the chat, and if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. That link will also be in the description. We have people talking about a variety of games, but we also talk about PC Tech, anime and more lastly if you want to support the channel even more you can look into becoming a member if you don't know what a membership is it is essentially like a twitch subscription again you're going to get access to the exclusive emotes the monthly badges and other cool stuff here on the channel cheaper than what a twitch subscription costs hilariously enough so if you would like more information all you have to do is press the enjoy button next subscribe and they'll give you a rundown with all the details you need all right ladies and gentlemen it's been your boy we'll catch you in the next one Cheers.